Hey, let's talk about sockets and networking. I've been doing a lot of beginner videos lately. Don't worry, juniors and seniors, I haven't forgotten about you. In fact, today I want to talk about something that probably interests many of you, and that is socket programming. We've talked about interprocess communication techniques before, different ways that one program can talk to another program. Well, sockets are another way to do this. The cool thing about sockets is that those programs don't have to be on the same machine. They don't have to be in the same city or the same country or the same continent. Sockets allow you to create a connection between two programs running anywhere in the world or outside of the world or wherever you can put a computer and provide an internet connection to it. And today we're gonna to look at what might be the world's simplest web browser. Now, before you get too excited, a web browser does two things. It goes out to web servers and fetches HTML and other content and it displays it. Today, we're not gonna do the display thing, no fancy graphics or anything like that. Today, I just wanna show you how you can use sockets to go out to a web server and actually pull down some content. So let's jump into the code. So this is an example I wrote up really quick. I just wanna go through it with you in the hopes that it'll be useful. So up here at the top, I'm including a whole bunch of header files that allow me to access some of the socket functions. I have a couple of preprocessor macros. Specifically, I'm trying to record the port that the server is listening on. HTTP, which is the standard for web pages, those servers are going to be listening on port 80, so I'm defining that here. Also, I'm just defining the size of the buffer that I'm going to use to read the data back in. And this struct sock adder shows up a lot in my code, and so I've seen it done other places, but I like to pound define that as SA. It makes my code a little bit less obnoxious. So for convenience, I've also defined this error and die function right here on the top. So if you look down here at the bottom, you can see this is just a variadic function that allows me to print out error messages and then exit the program. And I'm gonna use this over and over again because there's a lot of different ways that a sockets program can produce errors. And for this example, I just want it to print out the error and get out. You don't have to use error and die. This is just how I chose to handle errors in this example. So now if we look at main, I've got a couple of variables I'm gonna use. We'll talk about these later. So I've got my usage check here just to make sure that the person is using the program right. And specifically, all this is gonna do is this, is going, this program is going to run and take an IP address. So this IP address is just the address of the server on the internet and that's how we're going to actually go out and find it. And then the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new socket, okay? So a socket is basically a, an endpoint. It kind of acts like a file, but it's basically just one end of a two-way connection that I can write data into or read data out of. And this AF INET business, this means that this is an internet socket. So AF is address family and INET is internet. And it's also gonna be a stream socket. So most commonly, you're gonna use two varieties of sockets. One are stream sockets and one are datagram sockets. And we'll get into datagrams later, but datagrams are basically a single packet chunk. So if I'm sending just a single chunk of data, that may be a datagram socket. But in this case, I actually want to create a connection and then send a stream of data and get a stream back. And so in this program, we're using stream sockets. The zero at the end is for the protocol number. If there were multiple protocols to choose from, this is where we would specify. But for now, we're just using the default, which is TCP, which is the standard for stream sockets on most any computer these days. Okay, so, so here I'm going to zero zero out the address, and then I'm gonna specify the address family. Again, this is an internet address. And then I also need to specify the port, okay? Now this HTONS basically is short for host to network short, okay? And that converts a number from whatever my host byte order, whatever my local byte order, whether it's big endian or little endian, it's gonna convert it to the network standard byte order, okay? And that ensures that if I have two computers that are talking to each other and they use different byte orders, they're still gonna be able to communicate. This next line is converting the string representation of the IP address that we passed in as an argument into a binary representation of the address. And that's what this INET PTON function does. It converts a text representation of an IP address to a binary equivalent. And of course, if there's an error, we're just gonna print out an error and we'll be done. The next thing we do is we want to actually try to connect to that address. So we've set up the address and we're going to try to connect to it. And of course, if it can't connect, you're just gonna get an error. But if we can, then it's gonna continue. And, and what I'm doing here is, so this, I'm basically creating a line that I'm gonna send. Now, there's a lot of things I could send in an HTTP request. Now, this is like the simplest thing I could possibly get away with. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm sending the get command, okay, saying I just, I want a page. Give me a page. I send the forward slash. Basically, that says I want your root homepage. And then I'm telling it that I'm using HTTP version 1.1. And then the slash r slash n slash r slash n, that's basically just saying, hey, this is the end of my request. 
Okay, so then I write that into the socket. So this socket identifier that I created way back up at the beginning, I'm going to write this request into that socket. It's gonna send these characters over the network to the server. And then if all goes well, I'm going to get the response from the server. It's gonna come back and then we can look at it. Okay, so for receiving, I've got my receive line. So each time through, I'm gonna zero it out. That's just to make sure that my string is null terminated. Otherwise, I can occasionally get myself into trouble. But then I'm just gonna call read, just like I would from a file, but I'm reading from a socket. That's why I said the sockets are kind of like files. And I'm going to get a bunch of data from it. And whatever data I get, I'm just going to print out to the to standard out. I could save it to a file, or later on, if I wanted to get fancy, I could actually try to render this HTML and show web pages. But for now, we're just gonna look at the HTML that comes back. So basically, anytime read returns anything that's less than or equal to zero, the while loop is gonna end, because that means the connection is over, and if it returned a negative number, that means there was some kind of error. And then finally, we're gonna exit. Okay, so first of all, we can compile it. I made a, a quick little make file here, nothing fancy. I'm gonna compile this on my Mac, and then I'm gonna run it. So let's see if we can get Google's homepage. So I can ping google.com. And this shows me what the IP address is. And so then let's run our program with that IP address and see what we get. So we did that, it works, and we got a whole bunch of HTML. And we could pick something simpler if we want, but for now, this is a perfect example and it's working. And this will work for just about any web server out there. And we could change, of course, we could change the program and allow you to specify what URL, what page you wanted and things like that. But my point today is I just wanted to show you the basics of how a TCP client would work, how you connect to a server, and then how you send data and receive data. And in a future video, we'll talk about the server side because that's actually a little more complicated. But that's all the time I have for today. And so I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it's useful. If you wanna make sure you don't miss future videos, please subscribe. And until next time, I'll see you later.